For this standard, students can analyze the data of a two-way table, recognizing that the table organizes data between two categorical variables. Students can also use real-life situations within their school to create their own two-way tables, then calculate the relative frequencies to describe association. Have you ever considered a concrete way to introduce two-way tables? As you watch these clips, list some of the benefits of introducing two-way tables in this manner. In this example, students within a class have been polled to determine how many boys are right-handed, how many girls are right-handed, how many boys are left-handed, and how many girls are left-handed. Notice how they have assigned a label for each color tile. In Mathematical Mindsets, Joe Bowler expresses the incredibly powerful impact a visual component has on student understanding. It helps to take students' understanding to a new level. What understanding would students gain through experiencing a mini lesson such as this? This concrete activity allows students to integrate movement as they build their understanding of two-way tables. As you watch, consider what understanding students should gain through experiencing a mini lesson like this. Male and female, girls and boys, we could call it either way, right? All right. So of my gentlemen, you're gonna stand to the back of the wall if you have a sister. If you do not have a sister, you're gonna to move towards the front, okay? If you have a sister, move towards the back. If you do not have a sister, you're gonna to move towards the front. And ladies, the same thing. If you have a sister, I want you to move towards the back. If you do not have a sister, you're gonna to move towards the front. So of the two categories that we started with, I've just split you all into two more categories. What were those two categories? It's sisters and brothers. What? what was it? Sisters and no sister, okay? So each of my two categories I split into that. And what I've just created is called a two-way table. So we started off with our two categories of male and female, and then we split those two categories into having sisters and no sisters. So now to fill in my information, I'm going to look at my data. So I'm going to start with this box right here. I'm only going to talk to the females because it's in this row for females, okay? So of my ladies who have sisters, so those are my ladies in the back, I'm gonna count how many ladies I have and how many is that? Six, seven. Seven, you gotta include yourself. Six. Math to be made explicit for students in either of these contexts is the association between the two variables or categories. Within a two-way table, students need to understand how the rows and columns connect. Here, the first row and first column displays the data of females who have sisters. The second row and first column displays the data of males who have sisters. Making this explicit aids in understanding how to use the two-way table to determine probability as well as relative frequency. Watch and listen as these gentlemen think through filling in a two-way table. Um, for a total of 12 on the boys. So, it would be 4 and 8. I'm talking about for a total of 12 and 8. What is the total of 6 is? Yes. Yes. Now you're on the total. And 4 minus 12 is, um, is 8. The 4 boys don't have it. When students comprehend the categories, they are able to apply their understanding within a provided context. What should we do when students struggle? Joe Buller's research while writing Mathematical Mindsets instructs us to allow students to struggle while guiding their thinking through questioning. List the questions you hear the teacher asking. Also, list the student responses provided. It said it makes four chances of the students without IG. So much a total be too. 
How did you determine that the total would be 10? Because if it says this makes four out of 10 of students, that means that. Okay. The total of students or girls? The total of Because it says students right there. So when it says students, who was included in that category of students? The girls. Just the girls? The girls and the boys. The girls and the boys. So Anthony said the 10 would be the total. Where would that go in our two-way table? Do you agree with that, Anthony? He says no. He doesn't agree with that. Where do you think it goes, then, Anthony? Okay, so you said that wouldn't make sense. Well, let's look back at the context then. The four, four tenths, what is that referring to? What category? Okay, so looking, not having IG. So where does that total of 10 go then? And why does it go down there, Anthony? Because if it says that's the total, then that's the total sign. Okay. In seventh grade, students learn the probability of an event could be recorded as a fraction of outcomes. This understanding is applied when determining the relative frequency. The relative frequency is the ratio of the number of data points which fall within a given category to the total number of data points in the tabulation of data collected. This definition was found using links provided within the 8th grade Unit 6 Linear Models and Tables Selected Terms and Symbols section. What's the probability of a boy having IG? And how'd you get 8 twelfths, Anthony? Wonderful. So you were just looking at row for the boys. Nice job. Um, what would be the relative frequency of boys having IG? If the relative frequency tells us a percentage, how would we figure out the percentage of boys having IG? Okay. What would be that as a percentage? Zero point sixty-six. Zero point sixty-seven. Okay. What would that be as a percentage then? Sixty-seven percent. Okay. Take a moment to determine the relative frequency of girls who play in an intramural league. Based on the relative frequency, students should be able to determine if there is an association between two quantities. This example produces a relative frequency of 42% who are in a league, making 58% the relative frequency of girls not in a league. You'll notice there isn't a large difference between the percentage in a league and the percentage not in, a, in the league. This shows there's no correlation between being a girl and playing basketball in a league. When using relative frequency to determine association, students should look for a greater difference between the frequencies in question. Are you looking for an engaging task on this topic of two-way tables? The 8th grade Unit 6 Linear Models and Tables Frameworks offers the Sports and Instruments task, which requires students to survey classmates to collect data on who plays a sport and or an instrument. Students will construct a two-way table and determine probability and relative frequency. By the end, they are comparing the frequencies to determine if there is an association. Two-way tables task is a four-part task which aids in concept development, practice, and assessment. This is also found in the 8th grade Unit 6 Linear Models and Tables Frameworks. Illustrative Mathematics offers two tasks on two-way tables. This task is, what's your favorite subject? 
This task requires students to comprehend the best data, rows or columns, to use in order to find an association. <music>